up, everybody? Welcome back to Throwing Ropes 2022 Union Peer Beer League Week 4. Uh, we missed the first few weeks. Everybody's got something going on, but I don't think it's that big of a deal because um, we got, you know, you got early season injuries. You don't, it's hard to form an opinion and assess what's happening with players uh, that early, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, we're doing things a little bit differently this year. We got rid of a few segments. We added a few more. Uh, James is not here. He has other commitments, but it's going to be me and Danny tonight. And uh, the segments are going to start off. We've got two awards that we're going to add. We're doing the Thoughts and Prayers Award and the Iron Man Award, which we won't get too in-depth with because we're going to move right into segment two which is what everybody wants to hear the matchup recap and uh we'll go over all the matchups we couldn't not do a week four podcast because it's it was just we had two nail-biting matchups that went to the last seconds of monday night football and, uh, Crazy week. It was insane. Crazy. We had you know two nail biting victories by Danny and Jeff, and two heartbreaking uh, losses for Bruce and James. So uh, we'll get into that later as well. And then uh, we got the party goer. As we're doing the matchup, we're going to do the party goers for each matchup, and then uh, we're going to close up with two new segments. So we we got rid of the uh, fastest two minutes. Uh, maybe we can get back into that later in the season, but it's just a lot of content. It, it is the funniest part, I think, of the weekly podcast, but we just, uh, you know, it's a lot of thinking and everybody's busy right now. So maybe we'll bring that back, but for now, it's not in this week's. And uh, we're not doing the start, sit, cut, but we do got some fun other segments. We're going to add on the Beat ESPN, where Danny and I are both going to pick a player that we think ESPN has projected too high, and we're each going to pick a player that we think ESPN has projected too low. And then we're going to close up with uh, Wager Wars, where it's not going to be like last year. There was a couple of weeks that we tried to uh, do a parlay builder. Instead, we're just going to throw out some ideas for bets for Week 5, going into Week 5, uh, that we think are extremely possible or we just like them and uh everybody else can agree disagree and then throw them into their bets if they would like but uh without far further ado welcome back to throwing ropes baby we're going uh we're going to dig right into it let's make it happen Ooh. d boy what's up Welcome back, baby. We're back. Week four. Union Pier Beer League. What the fuck is up? What's happening? How you guys been? What's happening? Miss you guys. Miss you guys. I really did miss it. I hate when football's not yeah. happening, and I've been loving the shit talking and all the fun stuff that comes along with it. Be, I actually, I got it. So, Tommy, right before we started recording, um, you went outside for a smoke, and it was kind of a long smoke. And I have to ask, what were you smoking? I had a, a uh, actually, it was a light green pack of uh, oh. American Spirits. See, I figured it was a Zeke pack. A Zeke pack? I thought it might be. What would that, that would be like what, like a Marlboro Light or something like that? Oh, that would just be a, well, R.I.P. Zeke. <laughs> well, okay, so actually, that's perfect because we're going to dig right into the first segment. Which is the awards? Where this is a new segment, yeah. new segment that I'm 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 trying to you know bring on to the show, and uh, it was hard. There was a very close second for the first award. Like I said, we got the Thoughts and Prayers Award and the Iron Man Award. The Thoughts and Prayers Award does go to Zeke this week. He had 64.4 points. I'm not sure if that's a record low. I'm not the stat king like James is just so quick with navigating that stuff, but that was insane. He had seven out of nine players score under ten points, including two goose eggs. Two of those seven, two of those nine zeros. Um, it's. I think it's worth checking if this is the least points for in the first four games in uh, beer league history, because it's pushing it. I think it he's is. had a lot of. It's all stinkers. 
It is. It, you know, the, the, the big decision that I had was you have to give Zeke that award, the Thoughts of Prayers award, because it could be Austin. However, because he's 0-4. Austin's 0-4. Zeke still has a victory. But it, it is funny that it's the Austin's thoughts and avatar prayers. Avatar it's the thoughts and prayers. Hold on, it's the thoughts and prayers award of the week. So I wanted to oh, give okay. it to Austin being zero and four, but that would be thoughts and prayers of the season. We had to give it to Zeke this week with sixty four point four points. Unreal. I don't think I've ever seen it. I remember a sixty seven somewhere, but sixty four. That's insane. Um, I, I guess I think I, also there's the there's like. Zeke came in being like, I'm going to win. Uh, well, you got to. I have pu- total faith in my team. Of Austin, course. at least from the beginning, his avatar is screaming. Uh, <laughs> and he was like, I'm just trying to have fun. Um, so, you know, it's it's the, about you know, But just trying to have fun is something that a, a, a losing team would say. That's exactly. That's why the the fall for Zeke adds to the drama. We missed the first. So I, give him the, we I give missed... him the thoughts and prayers for the for the year so far. Austin, right? No, Zeke. Oh, Zeke. Okay, okay. Because of the fall from Because Grace. of how I they went Austin about the, from the okay. top. Okay. Yeah. Austin's avatar was screaming from week one, so we kind of knew. It was simply tough for me because Zeke still isn't in last place. You know, but for the week, you have to give it to Zeke. Like 64.4. He knows it. He knows it. We don't need to. We don't need to. Well, we'll get it. Actually, you know what? This uh, is what, exactly what I said. We don't need to get I into it, the awards too much because we're going to go into match. Yeah, recap yeah, yeah. and we'll talk about it more the uh iron man award of the week definitely goes to multiple scorgasms that would be elliot um he had the week high of 157.6 he had seven out of nine players with double digits and actually this was hard to do because one of his players got 19.7 but if you rounded that up to 20 he had four of his nine players get 20 plus he had a killer week, but we'll get into that in the match recap cap as well. 157.6 is the second highest score of the season, which was only beat out by 163.6 in week two, which was also multiple score orgasms, Elliot. Um, but he, uh, yeah, he's killing it. He gets the Iron Man Award of the week. Trevor Lawrence, usually your quarterback, you're getting like 15 points. For Lawrence to have 5.6 and then fucking TJ Hawkinson... To have 36 points, crazy. That is insane. That is insane. I mean, projected eight gets 35. Oh, that was also, uh, I forgot to do the uh, party goes of the week for this matchup. That's a new little bit we're going to do during the matchups. The party, go- the party goers are just people that showed up. And the people that mm. showed up, it, I wanted it to be Rashad Penny for Jack. But he and got, he showed up. I mean, damn, he showed up. 28.2. Um, but the party goer of this matchup is definitely Hawkinson. 36 points. Uh, Crazy. Yeah. You can't, I mean, his his whole team showed up, but the party goer of the week goes to TJ Hawkinson. That's insane. What did he have? 180 yards. Two touchdowns, 12 targets, which is good to hear. I mean, just insane. Crazy match. I mean, and what is it? Like two Detroit wide receivers and Swift are injured. So, like, it's the Hawkinson show until any of them get back. I know. And that's wild that they're still pulling numbers like that. Like, Detroit is a force to be reckoned with, which uh, is going to come up later in our other segments at the end. But... Um, one thing about this too, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, Jack's teams always score between 98 and 117 points. Mm-hmm. Like any time I look at a machine score, they have like 112 points. It is. He's consistent with that like mid tier scoring. He, he's good at that type of team. We're like, I mean, I'm Elliot's Elliot's just a monster right now. Oh yeah. But I, I like appreciate that Jack always has a team. That, like, if you have a slightly off week, he's going to win. He's going to beat you. He's the king of that. He's the king of, he's the king of consistency. He's the king of 110. Yeah. Yeah. He sits right there in the middle, and whether you beat, it's more like you either beat him or you don't, because you know what he's Right, you either boom or bust. Yeah. And then you know where he's at. You know exactly where he's at. 
Because this is also like, this is a Jack lineup. Like for Rashad Penny and DK Metcalf to have like 50 points, what the fuck? Like why? <laughs> where, yeah. where did that come from? Jack just knows. <laughs> he just figured Josh it out. Josh Palmer. He's flex. Three points. Doesn't matter. 110. <laughs> he figured it out. He's got Jalen Hurts in there too. But I mean, you just can't deny, I mean, Elliot's team is just going off. There's where I Chubb said that 19.7. Chubb is a great running back. That was the 19.7 I mentioned. If you just round that up to 20, I mean, he had four players that were over 20 points. Move into Zeke of Nature versus Goon Squad. Uh, I liked, I think I said this on draft day, like, I like Jay's team. I think Jay's got a it's good team. got... Jay always has a good team. Jay always has a team that I think he's a little boomer busty. But like totally. he busts more than more than not, or he booms more than not. Sorry. Booms and this one, I just feel like I look at his teams and they're always throwing up one forty. Always throwing up one forty. And with a two point four off Tua, like he got an, a Tua injured, didn't deter him at all. It did, yeah, imagine that. Imagine you know even if he, right, he would have been one sixty, you know ten yeah. more points. He's 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 looking at. Actually, in it's interesting though. Best of the of the week. Josh J. Oh yeah, what did I? I keep forgetting to do this. That's oh yeah, that was my party go over the week was Josh Jacobs with a thirty-two point show up. He showed up to the party. Um, Zeke's just did not. Zeke's just did not two goose eggs. Zeke's team like two, looks like it was a good over... team. It was a good team in 2019. I would oh my god, yeah, he would have won the league. Yeah. He would have won the league. I mean, McCaffrey showed up 21, Aaron Rodgers 16, that's disappointing for him. But just the, you know, the week itself was just not good. And actually, I could give myself I I I feel almost more embarrassed than Zeke because in my other league last week, I put up 69 points. And that is a full PPR leak. So I had the uh, thoughts and prayers of the week last week in that league. I did have three injuries, but even still, without them, the rest of my team just completely shit the bed. It was just awful. So I, I, I feel your pain being in the 60s, Zeke. But that may, that may be a UPBL league low i know it was the, the a record in my other league but that is just awful i don't know what to do for you you gotta make some trades you gotta do something you gotta do something way yeah. wires bare I, but the thing is you know what i am looking at there's no reason mark andrews jalen waddle and Devonte smith should have a combined 10 points you know like that's gross that yeah, that's that happens terrible. you know uh and i i'm i I am worried that I'm talking all the shit on Zeke, and he's gonna go off uh, when we play because all these guys Dude, are solid. Like, yeah, because even like Matt Stafford, six point seven. Like I, they I, just won the Super Bowl. Sense. They just won the Super Bowl. Yeah, doesn't make sense. How does a kicker get zero? And on wait, how did Austin Siebert get zero? When... I th- he I th- did he get hurt? Yeah, I think he got hurt. <laughs> yeah, he, Let's click on injured kicker guy. in a forty-five point game. Like, did he even play? Oh yeah, he must have not even played. Oh yeah, he was ruled out. He was ruled out. So he shouldn't oh. have even been in there. That's Zeke's fault, not okay. ours. Not ours. Yeah, he was ruled out, groin injury. So I mean, wouldn't have helped you there because Goon Squad put up one hundred and forty-one. Maybe you would have got sixty-nine instead of sixty-four, but still, got to think about it. That would be me and Austin. I had my party goers of the week at J.K. Dobbins and Miles Sanders. Um, J.K. Dobbins is back, put up twenty. Miles Sanders put up twenty-eight. Um, Austin's team didn't have a good week, but I don't think they have yet. So I'm not going to be uh, too confident in that victory. 141 is pretty good, but I mean the team is just tough. To having problems. Jamal Williams showed up to the party. Jamal Williams, like RB3 or something? Crazy. Yeah, yeah. In the league, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. He is. Yeah, position rank three. I mean, he's he's there. 15-6, rough week, 23-23. and 23. I mean, that's a consistent running back. 
That's a great play. Yeah. I uh, I wasn't confident going into it. I actually made a joke beforehand that I, I'm going to lose to Austin. I'm going to give Austin his first win. And uh, especially because, like, Stefan Diggs didn't show up. He's not at the party. But Miles Sanders and J.K. Dobbins did somehow. So yeah. that one worked That's out. A, did, did you pick them? Did you pick those guys up off waivers, or were they on your bench? No, I believe I drafted them both. Oh, okay. I mean, that's a wild... To draft those two guys and have them score 50. I got Dobbins in the fifth round, and I got... Sanders in the seventh round. But remember, I mean, I was worried about it, because... I mean, I drafted two wide receivers. first, First pick, second pick, so I went... I had to get some uh, quarterbacks after that because they went flying off the wall. I got Derek Carr and initially Daniel Jones, and then I since then made a move on Jimmy G. But I mean, I was it was rough. I mean, running backs and quarterbacks were rough after picking. It was just hard not to. I was the twelfth position. How do you not take Cup and Diggs when they're sitting right in front of your face? And yeah, I mean, I think that might end up being the smart play because you got two budget so. running backs that are. Looking like, you know, top tier. And a Elijah, lot of the first-round running backs are, you know, Dobbins was Dobbins was also injured in the beginning of the season. Right. I, I had higher right. faith in him, but he just uh, wasn't playing the first few weeks. But I also right. got Montgomery, who uh, we'll talk about um, that. We'll talk about that later when we get into some other segments. Yeah. But, uh, and I just, uh, about Austin, his avatar is a screaming face, and that's accurate for the season he's having. That's true. That is true. That is true. But we don't need to be... It's funny because when you, when you look at it, <laughs> you don't see Revengers, so you just see Space Colony 21 Angry. Angry R. Angry R. And that R could stand for some other things. <laughs> angry something. Angry something. Um, fourth, we wanted to do, because we want to save the two nail biting Yeah, so that's going to be TDs last. and Shamans, we right? We want to go TDs and Shamans. That is the fourth matchup. Um, we got Shamans Teddy... beating Teddy, 127 to 108, and Teddy being three and one is also crazy. Because if we could take a second and go to the standings, yeah, I don't think he's he hasn't scored a lot of points. It's just he has the least points against him by a lot, a lot. This, so so he's only I can't even remember. 368 even points against again? him. And it's like the next closest is Goon Squad, and with four twenty-two. So that's what a. Do you remember where do I even do 15. that again? Where I can get to show. Uh... Oh, go to standings and then go scroll down to season stats. Click on oh, PA right and PF. It's right yeah, 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 yeah. Like, cause that is this is wild. Uh, I might even out, but sometimes there are years like that. I think it was either last year or the year before Teddy had a ton of points scored against him. So and yes, uh, yeah it. Yeah, Same it just like, works out you know, that way. Yeah, but you can look you can look on the screen here. You got he's in fourth place with four twenty seven, but he has three sixty seven. He's three and one. And then you got people like James and Jeff, five hundred points in five oh one, and they're two and two, fifth and sixth place. Yeah, I mean we could talk about that later too. We can go. Let's go back to the matchup for now. I mean, I would say I think uh, when your only quarterbacks are Justin Fields and Mac Jones, crazy, crazy. And I don't. Uh, did I mean, he, did he <laughs> did he draft Mac Jones or did he get Mac Jones later? I don't. I'm remember. pretty sure I, he cool. only had one QB. I'm pretty sure he only drafted one quarterback. No, eighth round he got Mac Jones. He did. Okay, so he did get two eventually. Where did he go? Where did his matchup go? Oh, and actually, he picked up Justin Fields in the seventh round, which is pretty funny. He just, yeah. He's not a good quarterback. Oh, I got an ad here now. What did he end up, uh, what did he take in place of getting a quarterback? According to this, he drafted two quarterbacks. I think but, he. I think but Matt did, Jones but he was got him injured. Seventh, he got him seventh and eighth round. So what did he? Yeah. What did he go for instead? Uh, Kelsey. 
I mean, Kelsey, he, yeah. he got wide receivers and running backs. Zeke, Henry. I mean, I, I see what he did. Who was his first pick? Yeah, Derrick Henry. There we go. Now I'm back on track. But yeah. Anyways, the uh, party goers of the week for that one were Austin Eckler mm-hmm. and Qu- Clyde Edwards Hilaire, 31, 32 basically, and 22. Um, Teddy didn't do terrible with 108. Derrick Henry, 22 points. Travis Kelsey, 19. Expected. Actually, that's good to see Derrick Henry because he had a rough yeah. start, didn't he? He usually heats up second half. A lot of these guys do. He's heating up. But, uh, yeah. Joe Daddy, 20. Eckler. Yeah, my dad's running backs. The Shaman's running backs, I should say. Uh, definitely showed up for the Shaman's. And that is the fourth matchup, isn't it? We're Now we're getting into yeah. the saucy stuff. Yeah, the exciting ones. What a game. Let's do uh, Jeff and James first. Okay. Because that was ridiculous. Nail biter. He literally lost by, how do you do that? Point one, one two. Point one two. Yeah. So you have to imagine, so Monday Night Football, that was San Francisco and the Rams. Yes. So James needed exactly 15 points to tie him, right? No. No, no, no. 15.1 points to tie him. No, he needed 13 Point oh my god, you're right. Five, That's two. so fucking hard for my brain to like comprehend. And what's crazy, he, he was he projected at 13.8. Point point <laughs> projected at 13.8 and got 13.4. So, so in our league, this, isn't, this isn't, whole, yeah. isn't a yard in our league point oh one? It's point one. Or point one? So, so he only needed, I mean, no, no. He needed 12 yards. I don't think... What I didn't realize is that you guys in the chat other... Like, didn't realize there was a play, I think, in the fourth quarter where Jeff Wilson got tackled for like a two yard loss. Oh, no, Jeff went ham on it. Jeff went, oh, shit. okay. Then he was just not talking about it in the chat. Yeah, but yeah, no, he was Jeff pa- Wilson got he tackled. Pa- for he a told loss. me he texted me he was pacing and stuff around his room. He so was... James went from the lead and then back into back uh, down losing. Yeah, which I also Jeff or James I thought we is, did. I thought I did mention that in the chat because like that was no, going to be the game changer, or maybe no. I was text. I might have been texting Jeff. Maybe Jack didn't notice, but I was like, "You guys didn't like he's yeah." Um, but yeah, he which, was which, winning. He was winning, and then got he was tackled winning. for a loss that brought him back down, and then had like three more carries for zero yards. Ugh. After that, I mean, I can't. J- What's funny too that James's Ugh. journey. Is he spent fifty two dollars of fab on Jeff Wilson, and he I think he got roasted a little bit, and we're all talking oh, shit before the game like oh this better have been worth it. I don't think like, so. I don't think he should have. First been. play, or like you know first quarter, Jeff Wilson touchdown. Everyone's like okay that was money well spent, and then at the end of the game he loses by point one two. It's like, okay, well, well what was funny, that was money spent. What was funny, and everyone's going to be able to agree or, you know, be like, oh, I've heard him say that, is Jeff going. So Monday Night Football, I was at Gabrielle and Ryan's, and Jeff came over. I was like, come on, let's just, you know, watch a little bit of the game. And he comes over, and uh, you've all heard him say it. Jeff Wilson's running, and Jeff Grider is just going, oh, every time he got the ball, oh, it's over, oh, it's over. Oh, it's over. Just like over and over again. Every time he touches the ball, oh, it's over. Oh, it's over. And like just to win by that little, is it's it's miraculous. And he needed that's insane. Like he got the touchdown. Our, we're a half point PPR league, so like if he even just got like a little toss one, or one catch, one screen pass for zero yards, he would. And it won. was over. And that was it. That's a that's a tough loss for James, who has had a crazy year, and uh, you know I think he's third highest in points, fourth highest in points, somewhere up there. But he's two and two and fifth. But that you know the points for is always gonna help you. You know you can right right. 
you can bounce back. All it takes is one win from somebody from you and one loss from somebody else, and you're you're hopping right back into that top, you know, four, top three. Same with Jeff, though. You know, those two are both two and two. Right. Fifth, fifth and sixth place, but all it takes is one loss from the four in front of them, and they're going to hop in front with points four. So. And there's a lot of football left. We keep talking about it. Like, it's only week four. We have ten weeks until playoffs. Oh, yeah. No, there's, I mean. There's so much football to be had. You can't really make pronouncements yet. Right. Other than why, Zeke is dead. He, he might be dead. And Austin, Austin Zeke might be dead. Austin, Austin is dead. Um, so it's a fight for that seventh spot. But that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, which is like, yeah, we're, we're jumping into throwing ropes week four. But, like, week one, two, three, it's just kind of like. Nobody knows anything. Like Jeff Wilson, nobody would have even mentioned his name in week one, two, or three. Or maybe one, two. I mean, now he's just a loser. <laughs> Who? Who? Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson's a loser. <laughs> you just hate him or what? I mean, he lost James the game. I don't know. It's a loser in my book. But he almost won and won. Almost won. It's an L. But let's move into that week six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The insane, the insane, another insane loss. Not by quite as close, but just ridiculous that it came down to well, San Francisco defense on Monday the, Night Football. And the he second needed, to last play. The second oh, to last ahead. play. No, 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 talk about it. Well, the actually, no, I should, you're play. right. I should probably say this first, and then you get into the second to last play. Yeah. He needed 24 to beat Dan. From a defense. From a defense. From a defense. That was the only thing he had. He needed 24 points, and he got 23. That's insane. Like, to, just to even come close to actually having that happen. Defenses can go minus two and be projected eight. You know, I, I can't even remember what they – let's see what they were projected. I think projected. their projection was – They were projected oh, wow. 7.7, 7. and they got 23. He needed 24. For it to come down yeah. to the wire like that is absolutely nuts. Yeah. I mean – Here's the thing. So, the second to last play, if they got a sack, Bruce wins. Yep. They have Stafford. They're hold. They're bringing him down. He throws out of bounds. Mm-hmm. If Stafford was sacked, I would have lost by .06 points. .06. Point oh six. Uh, in which case, in which case, I would not be here on this podcast. On this I would podcast. be in jail. I would, I would be in jail for murdering someone <laughs> for throwing a television <laughs> into moving traffic. I believe it, dude. That would have been the hardest loss. I, I was pacing. I was going to ask at least I was gonna twenty ask, minutes because I had Jeff in my ear. I didn't get to talk to James during their matchup, but Bruce was in the chat. Bruce was in the chat, so yeah. we all got to see what he was saying. But like, what was going through your head in those last well, for couple? The minutes? night before. The night before. Well, okay. That even it, this is just a slow build, right? Because. At right before the Sunday night game, I'm up by uh, 36 points. And I'm like, okay, that's he has a defense and a kicker. Got it I'm up bag. 36. I, I, I should be okay. If the kicker gets like 15, which is crazy, I'm going to sweat a little. Kicker gets 12. Yep. So I'm like, all right, this is already not... This is within reach, and then that night I go online and I look up what's the most points a defense has scored this season, and I think Pittsburgh Week One scored like twenty three, twenty four. So it I'm was, like, uh, actually, that was the it was on my team, and it was the only reason I won that week was Pittsburgh defense. Yeah, what, was it twenty three or twenty four? I think it was twenty three points. Do you want so me I'm to like, go back or no? No, I mean I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay, he could get twenty four, and I text Bruce. Bro, I'm kind of worried about your defense. Like, I think you might. I mean, and then, so I say, like, you only need 24. And he goes, ha ha, only 24. And I'm like, okay. I mean. Oh, I'm that's right. I forgot about that in the, in the. Yeah. UP beer I'm like, chat. I'm, I'm probably just being a spaz. You know, like there's. But like Bruce was joking about it also. He's like, yeah, only. You know? Yeah. Like that's never going to happen. Kind of like. It's the Rams. The Rams can score. I mean, the Rams yeah. have to score like. A touchdown, you know, and we're chill. Cooper Cup. Uh, yeah, and like, the Rams are just not doing well. 
I think they get sacked. I think Stafford gets sacked like six or seven times. And then and what it's is it? still... I want to look at... I'm going to pull this up real quick. You might not be able to see, but I'm going to pull it up. All right, you know what? San Francisco defense, now that I think about it, nothing to be messed with. Check this out. Week one against the Bears when that was that rainy game. They only got four points. But at, after that, against Seattle, 14 points. Against Denver, 10 points. And then against the right, but- Rams... 23 points they had see i look at that they had a and pick i'm like six they had a pick six or a fumble yeah. six i can't remember because they had one interception one fumble pick six pick six i remember for a touchdown a fumble recovery and then six or uh seven sacks so the san francisco has 11 15 sacks after game four yeah here's the thing i look at that stat line and i'm like they only wow. put up 10 on Denver. Denver sucks. They only put up 14 on Seattle. These are the Rams. <laughs> they're not They're not going to give up 20. You're right. You would expect, you know, they they got four against Chicago. Like, oh, well, they're going to get, four they're gonna get minus four against the Rams. Yeah. yeah. So I think basically every quarter that ends, you know, they're, they're stacking sacks. But I'm like, it's, you know, it's fine. We got a nice, we got a nice gap. And then... What is it in the in the fourth quarter? There, I'm still up probably ten, and Tommy, you text me, dude, you got this in the bag. I did, and I'm I like, did. and I text back, oh, I'm not that worried unless when I texted they get it, a pick six. When I texted it, the Rams were marching down the field though, and it was like two plays, and they were already in like the you know thirty thirty five yard range. Right, and a touchdown seals it for me. Or, or touchdown, a field goal. game's over. I'm thinking field yeah. goal. Maybe they stop them on four on the 25. Okay, kick a field goal for three points. That still hurts the defense. Literally send the text to Tommy. Not that worried unless there's a pick six. Pick six. And there's a pick six. Literally as happens the as Tommy has... receives. I wish, I wish, okay, I wish so bad that Ryan was on the podcast because I was sitting next to him as this happened. And I texted him, or I showed him your text, and your text, you know, it's got the time next to it. Like, whatever yeah. whatever time it was, I'm going to make it up, like 9.43. It still had that little time tag, and the top of my phone still said 9.43. So I was like, Ryan, he just texted me this, and the next throw, like, it came into my phone. I read it, look up at the screen. Pick six, and, and then go, Ryan. Six. You're not gonna believe this. It was, it was. I couldn't believe that you called that. And then earlier, earlier in the game, I had called the missed uh, field goal. The or yeah, right? Yeah, it was uh, our boy, Robbie Gould. I was yeah. like, Robbie Gould looks like he's gonna miss it left, and he missed it left. Yeah. And then, like, it was just, like, a weird... That was only a couple minutes before. It was, like, a weird... Ryan was like, what the hell is wrong with you guys? Because I had called that, and then you called that, and he was like, what the hell is wrong with you guys? Yeah. Well, and so, when that pick six happens, I think I might have already lost. So I check, and I'm up four. And then... Rams get the ball again. Which, and I'm like, please stop running your offense. Like, this is... Just lose. Like, just end the fucking game. <laughs> and Stafford, like, he fumbles. <laughs> and the Rams recover. They got it back, yeah. That was the most stressful. No, sorry, sorry, no. No, SF recovered. Sorry? So, listen, so, yeah, sorry. Stafford fumbles in the fourth. Yep. I, I didn't know how much a fumble recovery was. If it was five points, like, I was, I, I was like, oh, shit, I, I must oh. have just lost. Yeah. Oh, well, wait, God, then, I remember this. I and remember then listen this to this. SF gets the ball, and all they have to do is get a yard with Jeff Wilson. And that's it. And James wins. And that's it. I <laughs> so forgot I'm about begging, that. I am begging I Jeff Wilson that. to get a fucking first down and end the game. He gets stuffed twice. So now, so <laughs> the nail biting back and forth. Um, was insane. That was the most insane beautiful. matchup like, I've ever seen because for two games at once to be that interlinked, everyone has different things they want to happen, and for two games dude, to end, 
That's the, first the combined time... point differential between our two games is what, like one point oh five between two combined, games. combined, combined. It that was the most insane, and it was so exciting because all of the exciting shit usually happens on a Sunday, and then right. Monday sometimes there's like, oh, this guy's got to get. 18 points to beat him and like usually it's like oh he's only got six and you know there's you know four minutes left there was two matchups that came down to the wire and they were both improbable Improbable. they were both how is jeff wilson gonna score a touchdown first quarter and then not get like you know 20 more yards to seal it how is the san francisco defense gonna get 24 points and they both came with not gonna happen not gonna happen i would never bet on that in a million years Crazy. Absolutely insane. Good and week. I, I'm saying good week because I won again. I, you know. Of course, of course. It hurts for lost, it hurts for Bruce. It hurts for James. A lot I of league left. A lot of league left. But no, I'm I'm not going to say bad week because that was the most exciting week. Usually, there's nothing really to watch on Monday. Usually, yeah. there's nothing no. to care that much about on Monday, and four teams. Gave me something to get on my feet and just be like, "Oh my god!" About yeah, that you know? was really and fun. you know, and you know that those four teams were all on their feet saying the same thing. So it was like, at least half the league, at least close to half the league, was just like Monday Night Football. This is awesome! I can't believe it's coming to the wire like this. Right, insane. And then week. here's here's me. Uh, you know, maybe I thinking maybe I shouldn't be sending memes to bruce about how i destroyed him <laughs> on a sunday afternoon you know you know think about it next time wait till the results come in you know no you got to you got to that's what makes that's it true fun. that's, what makes that's it true fun. you gotta call it. yeah i'll keep talking my shit if you're the meme guy you got him you gotta be the meme guy coming for you zeke coming for you zeke um i want and then I- party party goers do you want to do the party show uppers for this Yes, uh, Damien, party goers are, D- D- I should, I pronounced it wrong, sorry, Demon Pierce with 2020, 22.9. And we're going to talk about him here soon also. Because he And is... I would, I would give it to Goof. Actually, both of, both of Bruce's quarterbacks. No, Goof if is... you. It, yeah. Jared Goff and Geno Smith were the quarterbacks one and two this week, which is crazy. I know. I mean, Goof projected at 17, yeah. 33. He's not Goof anymore. He doubled his projection. Geno Smith was a close one, but I feel like the party go of the week has to go to the winning team. I've done it for the oh, last I thought we five. Do, I thought we'd do one for each team. No, I've been doing it for the matchup. Um. Uh... Because who showed up? Well, actually, actually, you could have... You're right. This is... You know, it's a new segment. We're working through these things. It's a new segment. The party goer of each matchup is who showed up. Who showed up to the party. And I clicked on Demon Pierce. Because he, I mean, hadn't, the demon. he hadn't yet. He's on Houston. He's the party goer of the week. He's the one that gave you the victory, I think, in my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. Because... Justin Jefferson, twenty six. I would expect. Expected. I would expect yeah. that. I would expect that. Um, Goff, great week. Geno Smith, actually, yeah, you're right. Party goer for Bruce is Geno Smith because he's been fucking killing it this week or this season, and we're gonna get into that a little bit more when we get into like the bets and stuff like that. And the 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 next two segments, we're gonna get into the BDSPN and we're gonna get into the wage award, <laughs> but. My, that was my party goer of the week. The week he yeah. showed up. Damian Pierce showed up. Twenty two point nine. And, and game of the week. Games of the week. Again, beautiful, Games of the week. beautiful Games Monday. Of the week. I mean, yeah, you're right. Like Elliot had the high score of the week. He had it in week two, but his opponents didn't give him much to work with. Like this is right. game of the week. One hundred forty six yeah. to one hundred forty six. Who's yeah. got it? Point nine four, or mm. point point seven four. Yeah. How do you do math? What is that? Yeah. Uh, point point nine. Point nine four. four. Right. Yeah. Point nine four. Like that's the difference. A point. Yeah. I a mean, point. nothing. Uh, can this game convinced me to drop Baker Mayfield? Because why? 
Basically. These points really matter. Oh, yeah. Wow. 5.8. Yeah. Eesh. Eesh. I might have said this This podcast is about accountability. And I might have said Baker Mayfield is going to win comeback player of the year. Uh, so I'd suggest Jeffrey pick him up off waivers. Oof. Mayfield. Rough. He's not. You know, my dumbass took a, uh, well, not, maybe not dumbass, we'll see, but I dropped Daniel Jones for Garoppolo. I don't know if that means anything, but I know Daniel Jones could get more than 5.8. I think you have you have a history with dropping Daniel Jones at the wrong time and starting him at the wrong time. I think you're right. I think I did that. With I think you spent movie. 50 bucks on Daniel Jones, like $57 on Daniel Jones. Yep, I think you're right. And he played bad. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot more I think, faith. I, yeah. I think he's gonna have I think he's gonna do okay. Actually the the first year that I did that and spent fifty seven or whatever, he had a lot more weapons then. Yeah. I think he still had OBJ and Sterling Shepard and all kinds of he had weapons, he just sucks. And I forgot to do to think about that. In terms of teams, I'm like afraid of. Oh, right, yeah. I think they're you wanna scary. Do that? You want to do that? Let's do sure. That. While we're talking about standings, yeah. yeah I mean, I think Elliot's team's scary. I usually think Jay's team is kind of scary. Like I they agree. can just show up and beat you up. And then the borderline scaries, it's like Jeffrey. So I think his team's really good, but he's got some injuries. And like, is Christian Kirk gonna stay really good? You know what I mean? Like, Christian in a Kirk's, couple weeks, we'll yeah. know how scary Jeff is. We'll see um, with Jacksonville. We'll see. Yeah. And then, okay, I think you and James. I'm still, worried, you, about, I'm still worried about James. Let me look at James. Here, pull it up here too so we can look at the same thing. I'm still worried about I, James. You know, I'm less scared because I think Kyler Murray's ass. Uh, Kyler Murray. Matt is. Ryan can't throw to Pittman. Uh, Lazard might be Dobbs. You know what I mean? Like, I think James has the potential to be a scary team. For me, he's borderline. For me, he's scary. For me, he's scary. I, I mean, Josh Allen. Lazard's questionable, but Aaron Rodgers only has Lazard and Dubs. But he's, I mean, the he just gives it to his running backs. He doesn't throw as much as he used to. But what have they done? Jones gets points. Jones and Jones and Dylan, they're splitting touches, I guess. I mean, well, okay, I guess as far as the team goes, you're right. I'm thinking fantasy. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I gotta switch my brain real quick. As far as Green yeah, Bay yeah. goes, you're right. right. That is scary. Yeah, they do run a lot. So you can be scared of James. I'm borderline scared of James. I'm still scared of James. I'm still scared of James. What was the other one? Uh. For me, my scariest are Jay and Elliot. Well, Elliot, Elliot, guaranteed. Yeah, Elliot yeah. is a scary team, guaranteed. Jay, Jeff, kind of Jeff, look at it. Jeff still. Oh yeah, right. Jeff's scary to me too. But yeah. All right. Do you want to do uh, try to beat SBN? Yeah, let's do the beat at ESPN. Uh, would you like to start? Let's start with your too low. You think that ESPN has? them projected too low yeah i think the anyone on the 49ers basically so that would be primarily like jimmy and uh debo i think they got jimmy projected at like i'm gonna go 11 jimmy points first. i'm gonna go jimmy first just pull him up what's jimmy project projected at right now for week five why the hell yeah, they got him at 11.1. Yeah. Which I understand. I think the logic is like Carolina has a really good defense, but it's the San Francisco defense we just saw versus Baker Mayfield and Matt Rule. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of turnovers, a lot of short fields for the 49ers. And to get 11 points, Jimmy just needs two touchdowns, which I think he's going to be able to do in one way or the other. And uh, I'm going to give you some more stats while I'm looking at it. 
Week two, touchdown. Week three, touchdown. Week four, touchdown. He went 154 yards, 211, and 239. So his yards are increasing. increasing. He's got a touchdown in every week that he started. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't hate no. I, I I like him for over 11.1. I think you're in good shape and there. And I think it's entirely – he might even throw for less yards than last week because Carolina is a good D. I just think they're going to have situations where, like – He had a bad – he had a similar – he had 16 points in almost 14 in weeks two and four. He just, against Denver, had an interception and a fumble. Yeah. That's the only difference. Two and four – I mean, you're still looking. You're still looking around 200 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, I like that. All right, so we're gonna beat that. We're gonna beat Garoppolo, and I'm gonna put that down. Over Garoppolo. And then, uh, what do you think? Should you do your low or should I do my high? And we'll do. Uh, do your high. Do your high. All right, my high was Josh Allen. They have that man at 23. They have him at 23.59, so 23.6. The man has had... 31 and a half, 30, 27, and then 23 and a half. Exactly what he got last week is what they have him projected this week. And he's, pl- he's playing Pittsburgh. He's playing Pittsburgh, who is beat up. They had a, they started off great. We just talked about that in the other segment where the Steelers got me week one, like 23 points that won me the league. But they lost Watt toward Peck, I think. He's done. Uh, they lost a couple other players. I mean, and it's Josh Allen. It's Josh Allen. He has not been lower than they're projected yet. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna count twenty three point five two against twenty three point six, no, he's not lower than that yet. He's not lower than that yet. Like he's he's slinging the ball. He's fine. Diggs is healthy. Maybe that had a part of it. Diggs is healthy. They might talk about that. But he is my underrated player of the week. I, when they said that 23 was his projected, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, unless oh, you got something? the Buffalo beats Pittsburgh up so bad that they Take him bench out. Allen in the third. No, at that, point, at that point, I still think he's got over. Right, that's true. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But he is decreasing... And touchdowns the last two weeks, but that's not gonna stay. That's not gonna stay. I'm telling you. It's Josh Allen. It's Josh Allen, baby. I think that was an obvious one for my uh, BDSPN. Sure. All right, let's go with your low. Who is your low? Um, I don't see Dalvin Cook getting 14.4. Um, I know he's a Bears killer, but he's just too beat up. Uh, I think. They got him at fourteen point four. Okay. I I just I don't see him playing the full game. All right. And that's why. So Danny, he has yet to score over thirteen point six. Oh, is that true? Yeah, I see. I didn't even look at that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I got it up here. Uh, I know you can't see because we're streaming a different way. I ju- I just pulled it up, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't even realize that, but. 12.3, 5.6, and 9.6. I can understand it against Chicago, too. He loves feasting on yeah. Chicago. Yeah. But I feel like they're only going to be able to get him like a dozen carries, and then he's going to have to – and then Madison goes in. Madison's – yeah, he's a factor. He's a factor. And actually, enough said about that because my uh, same matchup, my low is good old Justin Fields. <laughs> um. I know a lot of people are familiar with how much that I can't stand the Bears, but regardless, I have reasoning for it being my low. They got him at 12.3. Um, they play the Vikings, which I'm pretty sure Vikings have like a mediocre D, don't they? Nothing special. Okay. But uh, same thing, but the opposite. 
Or no, same thing as what you said. Uh, he's only scored over that in the first game against San Francisco. That was a kind of a rainy fluke. Uh, San Francisco's nice weather, and the Soldier, Fa- Soldier Field was flooded completely. Um, he got 13.6 that game with two touchdowns. He hasn't scored a touchdown since. He's had three interceptions and a fumble since. And the Bears just suck, and they got them at 12.3. I don't think, I mean, last week they scored 12 points total, and it was all field goals. They did not get a touchdown at all. And that's, uh, you know, that comment is going to lead into actually the last uh, segment of the podcast, which is going to be the wagers, but we can talk about that in a second. But Because I got, I got one for that, too, with the Bears. Um, but, yeah. That's my low. I think 12.3 is excessive for Justin Fields. I don't think that will ever happen. Look at his cut. So gross. I I didn't even realize it until I tried to look back at Danny and saw it on this screen. He has 121 yards, 70 yards, 106 yards, and 174 yards. So I think it's... I'm going to add one to the next segment and just take the under yards on that piece of garbage. Actually, maybe not, because it's probably, like, what, 130? I don't even know. I should probably pull that up. Yeah, just pull it up. Unbelievable. I do think it's low-hanging fruit to say Justin Fields is going to underperform. You're right. Yeah, that was an easy one. That was an easy one. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) It was an easy one, but... I think it's personal. With you, it's personal. Yeah, I think that's what you're right. It's more a hatred. It's more a hatred. Yeah, you just want to make a point that you... Yeah. High school quarterbacks get stats. Uh, Speaking of uh, accountability, Mm -hmm. you want to talk about bets? Let's talk about bets, baby. Um, We're going to get in the the wager wars? I got a fun – the wager wars. I got a fun quick one, which is the Lions money line, the Jets money line, and then Carson Wentz over two touchdowns. Just because I think those teams are all due – uh, Miami, like Detroit has to win a game soon because they keep losing by three. Uh, Miami doesn't have a starting quarterback and the, and Zach Wilson's back. He seems like a winner. And, uh, all right, now hold on. I'm going to slow you down here because I'm going to put these on paper, but some of ours might intertwine and it might be good to talk about yours and mine at the same time. Oh, okay. Sure. Sure. So let's start with what you just said. You like the lion's money line. And tell me why. Yeah. Um, who are they playing? I forgot already. They are playing next week. They are playing... Uh, shit, Bailey Zapp. Oh, the Patriots. 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 The Zapp, Zappy. Is it Zapp or Zappy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Zappy. Who I actually like. Yeah, no, he but... was the star out of Kentucky. Western Kentucky. Yeah. And he's So sick. then it might, it might end up being a shootout, which is hilarious, but like... They got to win one of these. Like, they're, I mean, I don't know. It's, it is the Lions, but. They deserve um, it. But because. They deserve you, it. But said, because you said that one, I want to move into. And I do want to make a point. Uh, we're not doing the, we're not doing the parlay builder like we tried to last year. These are just things that Danny and I like. You can agree or disagree with. And we're not building a parlay. These are just ones that he and I are going to potentially put into our parlays. And you can pick and choose. But because he mentioned that with uh, Detroit money line, I got to say mine now. I think I'm taking Detroit, whoever they're playing, I'm taking Detroit over. No matter what, uh, uh, the match over. Whoever they're playing, I'm taking the total points, I'm taking the over. And I want to reemphasize this in a couple of ways. Detroit is now the lead leaguer, the, the, the league leader in points for and points against. They have 140 <laughs> points for, 140 <laughs> points against. The line is 45 and a half. That actually seems low. It's really low. You have to take the Lions game over. They score points and they let up just as many. And uh, I think I like the Is it Zap or Zappy? Do you know yet? Zappy. I think it's Zappy. Zappy has been slinging the ball. I like Zach. I like him. The Patriots, I like Demon Pierce. So, dude, some of mine kind of intertwine. 
because well, Pierce is on the Texans. Or um 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 hey, Harris. You like Harris? Harris. Yeah. I like him. Might score this week because it's the Lions. He's good at scoring. I like him against the Lions. That's a good call. I like him against the Lions. I like the over on the Lions game because they score a lot of points and they let up, they they score the most points and they let up the most points. Harris, I mean, you got a you got a rookie QB stepping in. They might run the ball. But those are two those are two guarantees for me. Take them if you a like guarantee. them. Wow, the Baldacci guarantee. I like Those are two guarantees. I'm taking Lions over total match points. Lions Patriots over. And I like a, a Harris touchdown. And if the over hits, you assume Harris was one of those touchdowns. Was one of those touchdowns, exactly. Yeah. Good parlay. All right. What was your next bet? Oh, uh, Jets money line. Jets money line. Against Miami. I wish I could pull this stuff up on my screen, but I'm pretty sure that's illegal. So, yeah. Um, you like Jets money line. Explain that to me. Uh, two was hurt. Miami's in disarray, probably. And, uh, I like Zach Wilson. I watched his game yesterday. I think he's just, I think he's a winner. And uh, I think the Jets are actually like they have a lot of weapons. They got again. I'm, going I'm right picking. Now. They're rolling. They're rolling. I'm picking like kind of long shot money lines for the fun of it. But I could. I was looking at all the matchups and like the Lions and the Jets stuck out because I assume like the odds are good when you pick them, uh, and the Jets have a serious shot here, especially if it's Wilson versus Bridgewater. That's I think true. the Jets come back in the fourth quarter. Like they did last week. I like Jets. I like Jets there. I would take that as well. I would totally take that as well. Um, I got Seattle beating the Saints. They're the underdog mm-hmm. in the really. Ma- they're the underdog. That was the other thing wow. that made me want to bet them because I was like, "There's no way." They've got the Saints beating them. Um, Seattle to win is plus 185. Mm. Um, but Geno Smith's been slinging the ball. Hasn't he had a ton of... Let's look Gino, Gino's, Gino's a beast. Smith. Yeah. Let's go to players real quick. Is so it... Who's, look. who's the Saints quarterback right now? Is Jameis back? No. I think he's out, isn't he? Oh, oh that's players here. Hold on. I wanted Smith. Geno Smith. Let's look at what he's done this. I mean. He's still out of practice, they said. So it's sure. Dalton. Who doesn't look bad, but, you know. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. Yeah. Red, Ro- Red Rocket came back. Yeah. Everybody was talking about that. I forgot to mention that. That should have been in this podcast, too. Red Rocket's back. But Geno, 17-6, and six, bad. 18 and 31, but he looks good. Six touchdowns, two interceptions. I like it. He seems like he's heating up. I like Gino. I mean, Metcalf and Lockett. Lockett's gotten over uh, 10 points the last three weeks. I don't know if anybody noticed that. Lockett, four. Rough first week. 15, 12, and 10. So... No touchdowns, but still over 10, consistency. And then uh, Dookie Metcalf, who had to be carted off because he had to take a shit. Did you see his comment, too, Danny? No, what was it? it was, didn't you just say I have, to take a, I have to take a shit? No, it was like uh, that clinch walk wouldn't have made it. He said that on Twitter. Oh, that's funny. He, like, it was like he like tagged himself in the video of him getting carted off, and like you know was like laugh, you know sense of humor, which is good to always see in professional yeah. athletes. He was just like, yeah, that clinch walk wasn't gonna work. Like I wouldn't have made it. So him and uh, who's the other shitter again? Who's the other one that shits all the time in the league? Isn't it Lamar Jackson? I think it is Lamar. He's had like two yeah. games. He's had to run into the into the yeah, tunnel because yeah, yeah. he has the shit. But yeah, yeah, Metcalf on his way up. 5-5 five, five, and then 14, 15, and then 18. So I think Seattle, I mean, come on. Against the Saints. 
I think that's a guarantee. And they got the Se- they got Seattle at the underdog, so I think that's going to be a big payout. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, go ahead. I might do them all. Go ahead. Go with one of your other bets. You got another one? Uh, last one would just be Carson Wentz over 1.5 touchdown throw. All right, so you got him uh, back. You got him coming back. He had two first killer weeks and then two bad ones. Yeah, I mean that's the Wentz train. It's yeah, it's hit or miss. Uh, it's it's hit a or roller miss. coaster, yeah. and you just bet on you know this week. Titans are a weird team. You know what I mean? Like Titans might win, and uh, Commanders might only score fourteen points, but it's going to be off two touchdowns. You know, like you, I just don't understand when teams play the Titans. So I'm not trying. Uh, to, yeah, I, I don't want to do this. Because we're talking about guarantees. Because I like that one too. Yeah. I'm just curious. And we can talk about it later. But I'm curious. Like who's he going to throw him to? Is it Terry this week? Is it McLaurin this week? Is, it uh, is Dodson hurt? Uh, I don't know yet. But let's not yeah, get into Dodson that. Are, let's if, not get into that. If Dodson is hurt, segment... it's two, two Samuel TDs. <laughs> it's going to be two Curtis Samuel I like Samuel, Samuel TDs. a lot. I like Curtis Samuel a lot. So actually that might be added to my guarantee list. But we're doing yeah, that. If, uh, we're doing that right if now. Terry's, so if Terry is on Jeff's team, zero touchdowns. <laughs> he's going to drop him. He's going to trade him. And then he's going to score. Him. And then Wentz going to get four. Wentz going to get four yeah. if Jeff drops him. There you him. go. There you go. Um, my other one was, uh, oh, I kind of hedged it. This was a tough one that I couldn't decide. Um but I was going to do two. You know, I, I make multiple parlays, so I might do the same bets that we've talked about and make two of them to hedge a little bit. But you know that Lamar or J.K. Dobbins are going to get a touchdown. I think hmm. Jackson's the safer one. J.K. Dobbins uh, pays a lot more. But I think J.K. Dobbins is bad. I mean, he was injured in the beginning of the season, and I wouldn't be surprised. Everybody expects Lamar to rush, you know? So I'm thinking uh, that's that's one of my guarantees this week. I know he's on my team in this league, but I'm playing him in another one, so there's not much bias this week uh, as far as him being on my team. But I think he's going to get another one. I think he's going to do it two weeks in a row. I see that. I totally see that. Uh, Bengals D, also another reason. They got uh, good defense, but it's mostly good pass defense. Their running defense is mediocre. Right. And what, it's Bengals, Ravens? Yeah, Bengals, Ravens. Yeah, it's always a sh- I feel like they always are shootouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But usually passing, but Bengals usually has, uh, or Bengals this year has a good pass defense. So I think, right. I think, I mean, I hey, think Dobbins got a good chance yeah. of scoring again. Um, I got a couple more. Do you got any other bets you'd like I'm, to That's do? all I got. I'm not, a, I'm not the gambler you are. You're a good hedger. I got two more. I got two more, and they have nothing okay. to do with each okay. other, so it's not hedging. Um, okay. I like Demon Pierce again. I want Demon yep. Pierce for another touchdown. I think that's a guarantee. I don't think we need to get too into it. I just think he's fucking awesome. Hell yeah. And I think it's going to happen. And then uh, I don't – the the last one is uh, Dubs on Green Bay. I don't think mm. – I'm not doing touchdown this week. I did him last week. And I thought it was risky because he scored in week three. He got a touchdown in week three. But I'm realizing that Aaron Rodgers only has certain people to throw to, and they can't figure out the. They can't quite figure out. We talked about the running back situation there, you know, Dylan and Jones. But he only has certain people to throw to, and if it's not Lazard, I think it's going to be Dubs. Because Robert Tunyon is a tight end. He seemed to like him last year. He seems to like him this year, but it's just not happening. Dubs scored in week three, scored in week four. So I'm not taking a touchdown in week five for Dubs simply because it's kind of rare for a wide receiver to get three touchdowns uh, in a row. But I am going to take his over on yards. I still think he's going to target him if he doesn't get a touchdown. He's going to get the yards. I like that, yeah. But yeah. That's it. Those are the recommendations. That's not an entire parlay. We just listed a bunch of them. But uh, those are ones that Danny and I like that are something to keep in mind if you are going to hop on and gamble for week five. Which you should. I think you should. And I think it's going to be sponsored by FanDuel. No, we're not. Um, But... (laughs) 
That would be great, though. We hope to be one day over here. That would be nice. Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, I think we pretty much hit everything, right, Danny? Oh yeah. I mean, we got our thoughts and prayers. The Iron Man Awards are out. We recapped every week, BDSPN, and the Wager Wars. And uh, yeah, we're going into week five. Multiple score gasms in first. Real quick, who wins tomorrow, uh, Denver or Indianapolis? Oh, you yeah, that's a great. I Real quick, just quick, we're ending. I'm going, I just want, I want I'm going to Denver. Assist. Okay, here's my bet yep. for Thursday night football. Okay, all right, there I'm we go. I'm going Denver wins. Indianapolis does not have Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. I'm going Denver win. I'm going Sutton touchdown. And what's the over under, Danny? Do you have it up? No, I have no idea. That's it then. That is it. Okay. Right there. I'm going Denver. I might take the under. I don't, yeah, I don't know oh, what that stink, is. Stink. I guess it wouldn't be hard for me to find. 28 points, and I'll take the under on that. It's not 28 points. I know it's not Tony. It's 42 it's be, and a half. It's 42 and a half. That is low. But it's going to be 14 to 10. Game's fucking going to suck. Okay. I agree with that. But I'm still going. I'm still doing. Oh, God. That would be fun. And that actually probably pays a lot. Let's. I'm going to do it right now. Let's see what it pays out. I'm not going to bet it, but I'm going to pull it up. I'm going Denver win. I'm going under 42 and a half. And I'm going Sutton touchdown. 10 bucks pays 67. Yeah, they're reasonable. I like it. Actually, fuck it. That's it right there. Ten bucks. Sixty-seven bones. It's already there in, folks. Go. You heard it here first. And this this year, this season, we're doing accountability. So all these bets we make, all these predictions we make, we'll let you know if we hit them or not next yes. week. Yes, yes. All right, yeah. That yeah. should be like one of the first segments. We'll go over, or maybe we'll not one of the first. How, we'll go, we'll yeah. go matchup, recap. But before we get into wager wars, we'll see how we did. The week before yeah yeah and then we could tally like how right were you and right we'll keep, right, we'll keep right. some records i'll get an excel spreadsheet yeah. or something going we could see who's who's doing well and who's not yeah but uh yeah i think that's all we need to say great week for everybody i can't wait for the next 10 weeks so using the playoffs danny as always my co-host great to have you and great to uh, have you brother it's good to be back on Throwing Ropes, everybody. Woo! We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Take care, y'all.